Well, this was going to be a uh, mock up sort of a setup. Another QMojin uh, replication using a uh, smart drive washing machine engine. Uh, until such time as I noticed something a little interesting. Here we have a 10 watt bulb, um, and what I've done first was hook the common and one of the phases up to the 10 watt bulb and uh, we had to turn it fairly fast and it was fairly hard to turn to get the bulb to light so the next thing I tried was just going and using two of the phases um, and see how we went with that the interesting thing with these setups here is the rotor itself has 36 magnet segments whereas the stator underneath has 42 segments um, so would that be 14 14 segments per phase so that's basically what I've done I just decided to see what would happen if I ran off two of the phases instead of one phase in the common and um, the results were quite interesting you know it, it doesn't take bugger all to get that 10 watt bulb to light right up Whereas if you use a single phase, it was extremely hard to get that bulb to light up like that. So um, I'm actually going to turn this into something a little serious. And um, I'm going to hook a motor up to this, which is this setup down here. Uh, that'll allow me to vary the speed and all sorts of things. And um, what I want to do with this is go back and have a little more of a look at Luke's um, reactive power research in that I now have three phases to play with and gives me many different combinations and using this setup I'll also be able to vary the speed and um, get things pretty much within resonance if you want to call it with um, any tank sort of circuits that I'm trying but um, the first thing I want to do is just hook the motor up to this, get this up to speed, switch on the light and see what kind of a load it places on the motor. And also I want to put the scope across the phases and um, see what kind of a waveform we're getting with this particular setup from these motors. But um, yeah, that was uh, very interesting that it takes bugger all to um, get that light to light. 240 volt 10 watt light so um, I'm going to go ahead with this project and turn it into something a little serious instead of just a uh, mock-up and see what happens and where we end up so uh, I'm going to go ahead and bolt all the motor up now I already have the pulley machined on the uh, bottom of the shaft here as you can see in there and then that's ready to hook up to this pulley here course just takes one of these um, flat belt so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that get it all working fired up and we'll come back and have a look at the setup okay we have the um, setup all done sitting on my workbench next to my scope now um, this one here the way it's set up we're going to get um, a very accurate result as to whether or not we're placing a load on the generator that being that the generator is a standalone unit it has no exciter windings or anything on it um, and if we look in the back here you can see that we are just connected via the motor belt and onto the pulley so any load on the generator is going to reflect on our motor which will reflect on our power in so um, the fact that it's um, a permanent magnet generator um, is very good for what we're doing because it's not going to upset our watt meter in any way, shape or form and that will show us any difference in load placed on the motor. So um, we're off to a good start. So there's no other system 
within this generator that we can remove power from or, it, or is already loading the generator. Um, like I said, there is no exciter circuit or anything on it because it is a permanent magnet generator. Or alternator, whatever you want to call it. Uh, three phase AC. So at the moment I'm just looking at the phase angle difference between two of the phases on the scope. Up here we have our speed controller. Um, on off switch, speed up, speed down. And of course we have our watt meter, standby 3.6 watts. We have a light bulb here, which we're going to use as a load test. So the first thing I've got to do is actually go through and map um, each speed as to how many watts we are drawing with the generator open um, or draw up a graph I like to call it mapping so um, I'll switch it on and then it is a soft start Okay, so on the slower setting, which is 2, it goes up in increments of 2, we have 37.6 watts, and that is open. So um, what I have to do is go through each speed individually, wait for it to get up to running speed, and write down the watts, so 39.7. Uh, you will see I'm looking at uh, two of the three phases at the moment. Um, of course, using the neutral or the uh, common rounds of our scope and the probe on two of the three phases, which shows us a 90 degrees uh, phase shift between the two, or phase difference, phase angle difference, sorry. Um, which is a little surprising, I thought it would have been 120 each, but 90 in this case. Unless of course I go on the third phase, we get 120 degrees between each phases, but only 90 degrees between common ground and each phase. So, um, an interesting setup. The way I'm going to be doing it is I'll be using two out of the three phases um, and the results that I've had so far are a lot better than using the uh, common in one of the phases for some reason I'm not sure why yet but anyway we'll find out later on so that's our basic setup I'll get this video up and posted and the next one of course will be running through the rest of the setup uh, first we're going to be trying our uh, reactive setups get a whole heap of different um, capacitors, transformers and see what we can do with that but like I said first off we've got to go through and map or graph um, power consumption with open circuit and uh, that will give us something to go against um, during the rest of our testing so uh, I'll see you all next video. Cheers guys.